Hello and welcome back to the Alchemical Arts. Hope everybody is well today out there. It's ready to get stuck into some more pigment making. So I thought I'd do a slightly shorter video this time as the last few videos have been going for quite some time. Um, but I guess it's the nature of things and maybe I get a little bit too rambly. But anyway, let's try and keep things a little bit more short and sweet today with a very simple pigment uh, that I haven't actually ever made before but I've been meaning to for a very long time. So what we're going to be doing today is charcoal black or a carbon black. Now let's talk a little bit about carbon blacks. So obviously this is a piece of charcoal here. It's a hardwood charcoal so it's quite porous and it breaks apart quite easily and should be quite soft and easy to grind into a pigment. So charcoal-based pigments or carbon-based pigments are essentially just banking on the fact that pure carbon is black. And the charcoaling process, which is where you take wood and you cook it or heat it or burn it without air, produces a lump of pretty much fairly pure carbon. But one of the key issues with charcoal-based pigments as opposed to other forms of pure carbon is the structure of the initial material. So whether it be wood or sometimes they used to use bone, which is what you'd call ivory black or bone black, or, you know, in the case of charcoal, it would be um, uh, vine black would be one of the things because they would use the, um, the stalks of the uh, grapevines is that the structure and the shape of the molecules as the organic material, wood or bone, is burnt, remains in the carbon structure. So when you grind it up, if you were to look under a microscope, even if you grind it into very, very small particles, those particles of carbon would still have a shape or a structure to them. And for us as the pigment maker, what that actually means is the carbon or charcoal based blacks don't have a strong coverage because they're not like perfectly uniform pieces of pure carbon. They have sort of crystalline shapes to them which allow light to flow through so you don't get perfect coverage or really deep strong black. Now some of the ways that you overcome that is with things like lamp black where you're collecting the soot which is actually going to be my next project after this I'm just figuring out how to build a soot collecting device um, or finding other ways to synthesize and produce pure carbon. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and start grinding up this piece of charcoal here and see what we can get from just very, very simple charcoal, wood charcoal ground into a pigment. So all I'm gonna do is just a simple little bit of breaking up work here. So after a few minutes of grinding, I'm kind of down to a, you know, a rough powder like that. There's still some fairly chunky bits, but basically what I'm going to do now is just lay this out onto the, the slab like so, and then we're going to add our water. So just got my wash bottle, just a bit of regular water. I'm just going to keep spraying that on there. And then we're just going to try and mix it into a bit of a paste. You could use a spatula. I'm just using my hands at the moment because it's just charcoal. And we 
Definitely going to need a fair bit more water than that. Like so. And then, give your fingers a bit of a rinse. Like so. And let's get our... Oh yeah, lovely scratchy sounds of things on glass. So we're going to give this a good old grinding with moolah. It's going to take some time, but let's get a nice smooth paste going and get rid of all of those sounds. Okay, so it actually ended up taking me over an hour of grinding and I had to, and it still wasn't finished. So it was being a lot more stubborn than I anticipated it to be. So I left it overnight and I've come back again to do another session of grinding to really get it to that perfectly smooth, very fine powdered carbon that I need from it to be a good usable pigment. So we'll just get in close again and have another look and I'll start the grinding process again and we'll see how it goes. So far it's going okay. It's not as black as I would like it to be. It's got a more deep brown look to it, but that's probably because of incomplete carbonization of the wood and stuff like that. But we'll see where we go from here. Let's do the second session of grinding, see if it's as tiring as the first. Um, and yeah, we'll assess the pigment when we get there. So yeah, here's where we're at. As you can see, it's this sort of deep browny black powder. Um, it's getting pretty soft and fine. Um, there are still some rough chunks in there. There's also some little, you know, as you can see, it's, it's not quite black. It has a very brown quality to it, and I'm wondering when we wash it whether that will have an effect on it. But when you wet it, it certainly goes black. So let's add a bit more water. This time I'm going to try not to add too much water. Um, there you go. You can see it's sort of deepening up now. It certainly has that black quality. In fact, to make my life easier, I might, while it's dry, actually separate a little bit to the side and do this in two lots because it is proving to be quite difficult. We'll work with just this smaller amount here. So add a bit more water, get this into a paste again. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. You can see there the rough sort of surface quality, which is what's indicating to me that it's not, you know, perfectly ground down pigment particles yet and still quite some chunky bits of just and for this we might bring so let's get the molar again Yeah, you can really see all of that like roughness still in there. And that's what we're gonna try and work out now.
I've done a bit more grinding here and to be honest, I think I'm actually just wasting my time. I think whatever these fine little, well, I say fine, these little tiny coarse particles in and amongst the finer particles are, they're not really wanting to break down any further no matter how much I grind. Like if I collect the pigment paste together here, it's interesting, you can see you do get a bit of like a nice sheen on the top, which is what we're looking for if we're going to consider this fine enough to turn into a paint or be used as a pigment essentially. That sheen indicates that there's like enough like ultra fine particles to create like a more reflective surface. Whereas as you can see, as I spread it out, you get this speckly mottled surface, which says there's lots of like coarse chunks in there that are reflecting the light and that sort of stuff. So rather than just constantly antagonizingly grinding, trying to grind all of that out, what we might actually do is employ the technique that we do with ochre, which is to essentially levigate. So we're going to put this in water because I was planning on washing this anyway. Put this in water, let the heavier particles settle down, pour off the, the lighter particles, and that way we can get our soft, nicer, finer pigment without having to go through this much effort. And especially now that we've taken it to this level where I've ground so much of it into a fineness. And really all I'm doing is working with hundreds of little stubborn particles that won't uh, grind down any further. So let's get set up to do some levigating and some washing of this to take any of the dissolved salts out. And we'll see what the color turns out like after we've done that. All right, so I transferred what I had of the pigment into this beaker here, just a little bit of water. And now I'm just basically going to add some boiling water. Some freshly boiled water. Get it nice and high up there. It looks good. And I'm gonna get myself a spoon. And I'm going to give this a good stir to get all the lighter particles up into suspension. And then I'm going to let it sit for about that long. So a few seconds, maybe five, ten seconds. And then we're going to start to pour off into our next beaker. As I start to get towards the end, I uh, will slow down, trying to leave behind as much of the large particles as possible. And we'll add a little bit more boiling water to this. Just another swirl. We'll let this sit for a tiny bit longer. Mm, there's this lovely wood fire smoke smell that's coming up from this charcoal which is cool and part of what the boiling water will also be doing which is kind of helpful is any um, salts that have been uh, produced as a byproduct of the carbonization pro process will be getting dissolved now which will make things a lot easier and will make our carbon a lot purer so I can see a bunch of like chunky bits at the bottom there, as you can see there. And that's good. That means we've got rid of all that stuff. Gee, this beaker's still got a pinky tinge from the last pigment we made, which didn't seem to clean out perfectly. It's interesting. Anyway, so we'll give this another stir again. Letting it sit for another five to 10 seconds. And we'll go for another pour. Just slowly pouring. Definitely getting slower towards the end. And again, you can see there. chunkier particles and that's what we're kind of aiming to remove here 
So what I'm going to do now is just filter this to remove all the water through the vacuum pump and that should also remove all the dissolved salts. And then we're going to get the pigment and I'm going to dry it and we'll have a look at how it grinds up in some oil paint because I would like to have a black oil paint um, because I only have commercially made ones and I don't have any that I've made myself. So let's have a look at that. So I'll skip the vacuum filtering process and we'll get straight to the dry pigment. All right, so here we are after washing, drying, and doing all the filtering process. And we're left with a really nice soft powder that I guess it's sort of black. It's got this real browny tone to it. You can see like this sort of gray brown tone to it that Look, it indicates that the charcoal I started with probably wasn't completely carbonized, like burnt properly. And so we've got a whole bunch of, I don't know, wood impurities or something, unburnt wood in here. Uh, to be honest, this isn't the black I was looking for. And this didn't turn out to be a quick, simple, easy project like I said it would be. But it's still a really nice color. I love these sort of deep, browny blacks and let's mix some up in an oil paint now to see one whether we've got a nice smooth powder like we were trying to get and two i'm interested to see what the saturation of the oil does to the color and whether it deepens it down and stays that way because often dry pigments are a lot sort of they're not the same as a wet saturated pigment. So I'm gonna keep a little bit of this to the side because I've got some other little things I wanna try with it because I think it's cool. But let's just turn this small amount into an oil paint and see what we get. So we're just gonna add a little bit of linseed oil. Not much, like that to start with and we'll mix up a paste. Well, that's a pretty nice color already. That's quite black. I'm liking that. Um, yeah, it's got this sheeny quality to it. Let's add a little bit more. Oopsies, way too much linseed oil. Okay. What happens when you free pour the linseed oil? So we're just going to try and get that, mop some of that up with our um, paper towel here because that's way too much oil. All right, hopefully that's good. Now we'll mix in the rest of our pigment. Definitely a little bit too oily. Uh, maybe this will turn out to be just okay. Maybe a tiny bit too much oil. One day I'll do a video on oil paint making and all the things that you need to do there. But for now, that's not quite the focus of the channel. So let's give this a grain and see what happens after we've ground it. Okay, so as you can see, there's still some chunky particle, but I don't think that's going to be too hard to work out. So here we are after about 15 minutes of grinding with the oil and we have a really nice sort of buttery oil paint left. And as you can see, it's become quite a nice rich kind of velvety black. There is definitely a really warm brown undertone. Like you can see here on the glass, like this sort of brownish sepia coal tar color. And whereas the, you know, the actual paint itself is, is quite dark. Um, and I, I kind of really like warm blacks. Um, it's fairly smooth. There's still some sort of finely gritty quality to it, which, you know, we're so used to perfectly evenly milled paints these days that we forget that most paints of the past would have had some degree of irregularity to them. But 
I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna put this in a tiny little tube and try this out next time I actually get to doing some painting, which is not nearly that often. Well, that's it for this episode. Um, what I thought might be a relatively short, easy endeavor, obviously didn't turn out to be completely short and easy. The grinding was way harder than I thought. The piece of charcoal I picked out was not burnt or carbonized well enough. So I end up with more of a really, really dark brown rather than a pure black. But all in all, the process was in interesting and I think it's a good lead into doing some lamp black and soot blacks and playing around with some other black pigments. So that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.